Hello everyone! Today we will open up the booster box for Dominaria. And we're starting off with the buy a box promo, the exclusive not in the set promo that people weren't too happy about. But still, it's, uh, uh, it's maybe a nice commander card, but not really playable in other formats. So, Fire Song and Sun Speaker. For 6 mana, we get a 4, 6 and red instant and sorcery spells you control have lifelink. Whenever a white instant or sorcery spell causes you to gain life, Fire Song and Sun Speaker deals 3 damage to target creature or player. That's uh, pretty interesting, especially for Commander, of course. Right, Dominaria, the story of the, well, actually, the plane where it all began. We finally returned after all these years. All right. And the last time uh, we have been here was during uh, Future Sight, actually. In 2008, was it? Hmm. It's been a while. Well, the theme of the set is a legendary and, uh, well, historic, which means artifacts, leg uh, legendaries, and sagas, like this bird tells you. Right. There's so much beautiful art in this. Oh, so much lore behind it. Icy Manipulator. First printed in uh, Alpha. It's been in uh, quite some sets now and... Uh, yeah, it's a pretty good card. Solid card. Very, very good. The Weight of Memory. Yeah. Gaia's Blessing. Also a reprint from the Weatherlight. Back in the days. And the first rare is Zahid, Jinn of the Lamp. For 6 mana we get a 5-6. And you may pay 4. Add Zap an untapped creature. Uh, sorry, artifact you control. Rather than pay this spell's mana cost. And it has flying. So that's that. Uh, forest. Uh, oh, pfft. and we get the same card, but foil. So that's our foil rare. That's uh, early. Uh, yeah, let's just put that over here. And a silly looking sprawling token. Look at that. Right, okay, so I'm not that happy about that foil rare. That basically means that's out of the window. Well, alright, we still have some mythics to go. And the rest of the box, of course. <laughs> Mesa Unicorn. Just look at that. Oh, it's just a silly card. Uh. Right. Uh, Merfolk Trickster. Uh, Warcry Phoenix. Howling Golem. And a rare here is Grand Warlord Rada. For four mana we get a 3-4 haste. And whenever one or more creatures you control attack at that much mana in any combination of red and green. And or green. Until end of turn, um, you don't lose this mana as steps and phases. And an island and another one of these Sproling tokens. Goblin Barrage. A memorial to glory, Grun, the Lonely King, and a rare is a Goblin Chain Whirler. For three uh, mana, we get a 3 3 first strike, and when it enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to each opponent and each creature and planeswalker they control. We have an island and a Goblin Token with spikes. By the looks of it, it just looks like a Space Marine armor, that big. Uh, right. Uh, Firefist Adept, Merfolk Trickster, Yargol, Glutton of Urborg. This card, oh my god. And we get a Sulfur Falls. Nice, I like it. Uh, yeah, this is one of the so called checklands from the Innistrad block. Uh, when they enter the battlefield, 
they enter tapped unless you control one of the two lands of the color that it makes. So in this case, island or mountain. Very nice. I like it. I needed that. Spore Swarm, a memorial to genius, slime food to stow away, and a rare is a steel leaf champion. For three, we get a 5 4, and it can be blocked with creatures with power two or less. And we get a foil Mesa Unicorn. Just look at that. Oh, it's just magnificent. Look at it. <laughs> Very nice. All right. Put it over there. Over there. Wild Onslaught, uh, Sentinel of the Pearl Trident, and uh, Tiana the Ship's Caretaker. And then we get as a rare a Verdant Force, also uh, a reprint from, I believe, Alpha as well. Or it could be Legends, one of the two. Um, so it's a 8 mana creature, 7-7, seven, seven, and at the beginning of each upkeep create a 1-1 one, one green Saproling creature token. Very nostalgic. Still no mythics so far. So, still have all of the chances to get anything we want. Goblin Warchief, also a reprint. Uh, Final Parting. Amaranthine Wall. And we get uh, Squee, the Immortal. Alright, Squee is back. He looks a bit silly, but... Still, he's back and he's holding his uh, favorite toy. Also a piece of the uh, original legacy weapon. Yeah, Squee is immortal in the story. Um, he was tortured by Crovax, the vampire, and gave Squee immort uh, immortal life, therefore killing him over and over and over again. Um, for three mana, it's a 2-1, and you may cast Squee the Immortal from your graveyard or from exile. That is very interesting and we get a foil slinvoda the rising deep nice <laughs> look at that surprising what a silly creature memorial to folly with Urza and Gerard over here. Uh, Elfheim Druid. And Valduk, the Keeper of the Flame. And a rare, the Tempest Jin. A 0 4 for 3, flying. And it gets plus 1 plus 0 for each basic island you control. Pretty nice in the pre release. <coughs> A Dauntless Bodyguard, a Net, a Nature Spiral, is, uh, this is also re a reprint from one of the M core sets. Uh, Rav Capassion, Ship's Mage, relative of Gerard Capassion. Uh, yeah. And as a rare here we have Mishra's Self Replicator. Very cool, it's a 2-2 two -two for 5. Uh, whenever you cast a historic spell you may pay 1. If you do, create a token that's a copy. Mishra's self-replicator. So yeah, if you just have enough mana, you can get a whole army. Quite a short amount of time. We still haven't seen any mythics. That's uh, silly. Right. On Sarah's wings. I love this card. Beautiful. Let's look at the art. Stained glass wings. Oh. Skizik. Oh, this is so much nostalgia. This card was first printed in uh, Invasion. And when the set first came out, um, when I was younger, I bought one booster. That was all the money I had. And Skizik was in there. And back then it was a pretty big deal. 
These days it's just a common. Then it was a rare. Grundle only king and... Oh, nice. Teferi, the hero of Dominaria. That's actually a pretty nice uh, card. Uh, so yeah, for, four, uh, for five mana we get a four loyalty planeswalker. Plus one is uh, draw a card. And at the beginning of the next end step, untap two lands. Uh, minus three is uh, put target non-land permanent into its owner's library. Third from the top. And minus eight, you get an emblem with... Whenever you draw a card, exile target permanent and opponent controls. <laughs> that is just sick. So that's our first uh, mythic from the box. We get that over there. Look at that. It's just a. It looks like a bouquet of flowers. All right. Well, to carry, that's not a. It's not a bad start. Could have been worse. Oh, yeah, Lenoir Elves also reprinted from Alpha. Juggernaut also reprinted from Alpha. Uh, Curator's Ward and uh, Rona, the Disciple of Gix. I was um, surprised that uh, Gix is still being mentioned. He was one of the um, Firexions, the original Firexions, that went with Yagmoth from Dominaria to Firexia. But that was like... 8,000 years before this set, so that's pretty hmm, silly. And we get the Mirari Conjecture as our rare. And the first saga that we see. Uh, for 5 mana we get an enchantment saga. When it enters uh, and after you draw step at a lore counter, sacrifice after the third. So when it enters the play, it immediately starts at chapter 1, which says return target instant from your graveyard to your hand. Then the next turn, you'll, yeah, you'll get to chapter 2. Return target sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. And chapter 3 is until end of turn. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. Very cool. An island and a token. There is one token in the set that I really, really, really want. That's a, a stained glass token. But I haven't seen that one all day. Uh, Fight with Fire. Ah, Chainer's Torment, also a saga. Pretty grim art. And Curator's Ward. And another mythic, Multani, Yavimaya's Avatar. Back in the days, um, the old Skyship Weatherlight was built from uh, wood that was grown by Multani. So yeah, he goes uh, way back as well. So for 6 mana we get a 0-0. Zero, zero. It's Reach and Trample. And it gets plus 1, plus 1 for each land you control. And each land card in your graveyard. And for 2, return 2 lands you control to their owner's hand. Return Miltani from your graveyard to your hand. Nice. That's our second Mythic. Not disappointed about that either. And then again, this um, this entire set, it doesn't really bother me if I don't get any value out of it. It's just, this is so much nostalgia. I just want the cool cards, just like that. A memorial to Unity, Sanctum Spirit, Tetsuko Umezawa, Fugitive. And we get a rare Yakmoth's Vile Offering. This is a pretty badass card. Just look at it. It's the Firection Arena. And we see Gerard here standing with an axe in his hand and the head of Ursa offering it to, to yeah to Yagmoth. It's a pretty pretty sick. So for five mana we get a legendary sorcery, and you can only cast a legendary sorcery if you control a legendary creature or planeswalker. Uh, put up to one target creature or planeswalker card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Destroy up to one target creature or planeswalker, exile Yagmoth's file offering. So basically this is the story of the Phyrexian Arena. Uh, the mortal fighting the planeswalker. And now uh, one of them uh, losing. Any planeswalker back in the days was Urza of course. 
Opt, also reprinted from Invasion and Ixalan. Champion of the Flame, uh, Seal Away, Whisper, the Blood Liturgist, and we have Karn's Temporal Sundering. Oh, I really like this art. Just look at it. It's very, very weird. But then again, uh, so is the story behind it. Uh, six mana, Legendary Sorcery. Uh, target player takes an extra turn after this one. Return up to one target non-land permanent to his owner's hand. Exile Karn's Temporal Sundering. Right, so Karn was built once upon a time by Urza uh, in the Tolarian Academy as a time machine. He regretted the actions uh, that made him uh, lose his brother, Mishra, in the war between them. And he built uh, Karn to go back in time and save his brother, basically. But after a lot of experimenting, that just went wrong. And all of these time rifts appeared on Toleria and the whole plane went in a temporal chaos. It's uh, pretty nice. And that's where Time Spiral and such come from. Planet of Chaos, etc, etc. <clears throat> Knight of Grace. Basically a white knight. Elfame Druid, Rona, Disciple of Gix, and Araris Josephus, the Lich King, uh, Knight, sorry. For 4 mana we get a 4-5, and it has a kicker cost of 6, it has menace. When uh, Josephus, the Lich Knight, enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, create 8 two, 2 Black Zombie Knight creature tokens with menace. Now, there's a funny story behind this. Uh, right, this is the brother of Liliana. Um, yeah, so that's that. But uh, during the pre-release, when I cast it, I managed actually to uh, pay the kicker cost and I got eight of those tokens. Next turn, my opponent removed this one and I brought it back with another card and kicked it again. So yeah, that was pretty brutal, pretty nice. And ever since, I actually like this card. Before, with the spoilers, I didn't really care much about it. And as our foil, we have a Pardic Wanderer. Nothing too special. And we have a Construct token. All right. The Eldest Reborn. And here we see Nico Bolas. Reborn. Oh. Seal away. Wizards retort. And Evra Halcyon witness. A rare for 6 mana. We get a 4-4 four, four lifelink. And when you pay 4 you can exchange your life total. With Evra Halcyon witness power. Right. Alright. So, so far... Only two mythics. Cast down. Damping Sphere. Very good card. And Arvat the Cursed. One of the new crew members of the Weatherlight. And we have a Clifftop Retreat. One of those lands that I talked about earlier. But for red and white this time. And a Foil Swamp. All right. Joyra's Familiar, Time of Ice, Tiana, Ship's Caretaker, and we get Territorial Allosaurus. For 4 mana we get a 5-5, five, five, the kicker cost of 3. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, it fights another target creature. Sweet. Shield of the Realm, Diligent Excavator, Valduk, Keeper of the Flame, and we get another rare, the Fall of the Thren. Oh, nice. Um, for six mana, it's uh, another saga. Uh, chapter one is Destroy All Lands, chapters uh, two and three. 
Each player returns two land cards from their graveyard to the battlefield. Right, uh, the Thran. We can see the, the Null Moon over here. This is the uh, floating city of the Thran. And here we can see the Phyrexians and uh, the whole yeah, fall of the Thran Empire, basically. Which was quite a mystery back in uh, the early days of Magic. No one knew what happened. Not even Urza and Mishra. And another foil. A woodland cemetery. Oh, that is pretty nice to have it foil. Right. Well, it's uh, two foil rares in one box. That's not too bad. Especially one of them being a land. Orkish Vandal. Uh, Thalet Soothsayer. Quende, the Pride Ephemerith. And... Isolated Chapel. Well, uh, <laughs> another one of these lands, but for white and black. So it seems we only need one now. That's the Hinterland Harbor. Another foil. Skizik this time. Nice. And we're still not through to the box. So, still only two Mythics. A bunch of those lands. So that's it. Yeah, this is pretty, pretty, pretty good, in my opinion. Uh, cast down. Fungal Plots, Denitha Compassion, Paragon, and as a rare two-headed giant. For 4 mana, 4-4. Four, four. Whenever it attacks, flip two coins. If both coins come up heads, two-headed giant gets double strike until end of turn. If both of them come up tails, um, it gains Menace. It's a fun card, but it's not... Yeah, I don't know. It's not, it's not for me. Urza's Tome, very cool. Uh, Final Parting, Tatiova, Benthic Druid, and we have a Woodland Cemetery yet again, but this time the regular one and not the foil. Nice, I think I have a play set of these now. That's uh, pretty good. Well, <laughs> the other uh, land is in here. It's going to be just great. Still. Still looking for some mythics. Zulfirin Void. This card, man. Oh, this is such a great card. Enters the battlefield. Not even tapped. You can scry and it just adds mana. But still, it doesn't enter tapped. Sarah Angel. Also a reprint from Alpha, of course. Uh, Firefist Adept. And another rare. Ariel, Knight of Windgrace. And if I recall correctly, Lord Windgrace was a planeswalker from back in the days um, the invasion one of the nine planeswalkers in a titan suit hmm. uh, right for four mana we get a four four vigilance uh, for three tap create a two two white knight creature token with vigilance uh, one black tap tap x untap knights you control destroy target creature with power x or less Right. So, uh, yeah, for the mythics that we still have to go through, we only have two, so I expect two more in this box, and I really hope for, uh, well, a Joyra and a Karn. If so, the, the gang has been assembled, the old gang. I see Manipulator, Song of Freelies. That's a very nice art. A memorial to war and another Ariel Knight of Windgrace. All right, that's uh, two boosters in a row. Same cards. Same. Well, there's our duplicate. No box opening without a duplicate rare. Spore Swarm, uh, Goblin War Chief, memorial to war, and yeah, <laughs> Joyra, the Weatherlight Captain. Well, that's uh, one. Uh, yeah, for 4 mana we get a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever you cast a historic spell, draw a card. A lot of people say this is a pretty bad card. And for standard and modern, it probably is. But not for commander. Yeah, cool. So that's uh, 3 mythics. And a uh, Cadox Bladewing token. Right, uh, so not only uh, Karn. Yeah. And it's also the most expensive card, so... 
that would be pretty nice to have for a change a nice box that would be fun uh, lingering phantom sarah angel garna the blood flame and we have a siege gang commander reprint from scourge i believe yeah something from the onslaught block for five mana we get a 2-2 two, two. when it enters the battlefield create three one one red goblin creature tokens for two sacrifice a goblin and it shoots two damage to any target pretty good card zombie knight still no stained glass token it's, it's a bummer i really really want those but then again everyone wants those where i play hmm. thalid soothsayer uh, weight of memory out of the cursed and <laughs> the hinterland harbor we seriously have every one of these lands in the box that i believe that's never happened to me for a cycle of lands the rare lands wow nice very happy with that like i said the more the merrier and at the time of filming this i still have one pre-release to go so who knows what I'll get tomorrow. Uh, Memorial to Glory. Sanctum Spirit. Baird. Right, the camera stopped. So, um, I don't know where I was. Um, Sanctum Spirit. Baird, Steward of Argive. And Benelish Marshall. For three, a 3-3. Three, three. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Cool. Another one of these sprolings. Uh, they are everywhere. Eight boosters to go. Uh, Sage of Latnam, also an, uh, a reprint from Alliances, I believe. Uh, Thorn Elemental, a reprint from Ursus Destiny, all the way through 7th uh, edition, 8th edition. Denitha Capassion, once again. And we have another rare, the Mending of Dominaria. And this is the story of uh, Time Spiral, where those time rifts were restored. And actually that the Mending happened. And the Mending was uh, an event that caused all the Planeswalkers to have their spark changed. Before the Mending, all the Planeswalkers were immortal. And they couldn't die, they couldn't age, they are they were just immortal and they could do anything. They were like gods. But to make uh, Planeswalkers actually a playable thing in Magic, it had to be changed. Because having a god in play is quite overpowered. And so the Mending was um, yeah, written in the story. And therefore the spark changed and now they are mortal and aging. Just look at uh, Jaya Ballard in the set. She is old, but she used to be Planeswalker from the Ice Age. She never aged. And also Liliana. Liliana used to be uh, 100, 100 years old or something. She was from before the Mending and now she is uh, dealing with her pact. And getting old then. Well then, the Mending of Dominaria. For 5 mana we get an Enchantment Saga. Chapters 1 and 2, put up two cards of your library into your graveyard, then you may return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. And for chapter 3, return all land cards from your graveyard to the battlefield, then shuffle your graveyard into your library. Cool. Another one of these subprolings. Where are the tokens with stained glass? I believe a knight or a soldier. One of those two. I want it. An Untamed Kavu, Knight of Malice, Slinvoda, the Rising Deep, and we have a Gilded Lotus. Oh, such a beautiful card. Five mana. Um, it's just an artifact that taps for three mana of any color. Reprinted originally in Mirrodin, uh, then in one of the M sets, the core sets, then in From the Vault. Uh, 20 and it's also available in the Chandra Planeswalker deck. Just pick it up and you'll get one of these, and that's the reason that this one 
sank like a brick price wise it's now only one euro fifty or something it used to be way more than that but still it's a great fun card and we get a foil weight of memory which is an uncommon Right, Chainer's Torment. Let's look at him. Ugh. In Bolas Clutches. This is such a great card. I have played this in the two pre-releases that I played today. Both times. And it was a lifesaver. This card is just... It's for 6 mana. You steal an, uh, a permanent and it becomes legendary. But still, this is great in limited. Sealed. Adelitz, the Cinder Wind, and we have a Shalai, Voice of Plenty, which is actually a pretty nice card. Uh, for 4 mana we get a 3-4 Flying. You, Planeswalkers you control, and other creatures you control have Hexproof. And uh, for 6 mana, uh, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature you control. Great card. Ah yes, there is the token, the Stained Glass token. Look at how beautiful it is. If only we had a foil one of this. Oh, that would be amazing. But we don't. The Flame of Kelt, also a saga. On Sarah's Wings, another Rev Capassion, and we have another rare, the First Eruption. Which is also an enchantment saga. Uh, chapter 1. Oh right, it costs 3. Chapter 1. The first eruption deals 1 damage to each creature without flying. Chapter 2. Add 2 red mana. Chapter 3. Sacrifice a mountain. If you do, the first eruption deals 3 damage to each creature. Now, I believe this card is uh, part of the Elder Dragon Wars. I don't know for sure, but that's what I'm guessing. Mm, I haven't really read up on this one. And we have another foil common, Sarah Disciple. And another Saproling token. Well, we only have three Mythics so far, but still we have a lot of good hits. A lot of fun hits. Sorcerer's Wand. Wizard's Lightning, Shana, Cisse's Legacy, great card. And we have another Mythic, the Ferection Scriptures, which is also a saga. For 4 mana, uh, chapter 1, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on up to 1 target creature. That creature becomes an artifact in addition to its other types. For 2, uh, chapter 2, destroy all non-artifact creatures. And chapter 3, exile all cards from all opponents' graveyards. Excellent, excellent card in fla in terms of flavor. Right. Oh no, wait, this, uh, this is a mythic. So we have four mythics now, which could be the end of the mythic, the mythic strikes for the box. But we don't know that yet until we have seen them all. A friend of mine opened the box and he had four mythics, so yeah, that was it for him. Spore Crown Thalit, the Eldest Reborn, Bored the Weatherlight, and we have Naban, the Dean of Iteration. Iteration. For two, we get a 2 1. If a wizard entering the battlefield under your control causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Perfect. Now do it again. All right. Another one of these beautiful tokens. Kinetic. Right, two boosters left. Will we get something unexpected? Will, will we hit another mythic? Will we hit uh, something cool? Foil? I don't know. Nature Spiral. Sorcerer's Wand. Schlin Voda, the Rising Deep. And we have Haphazard Bombardment. 
For six, we get an enchantment. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, choose four non-enchantment permanents you don't control and put an aim counter on each of them. At the beginning of your end step, if two or more permanents you don't control have an aim counter on them, destroy one of those permanents at random. So one of those cards, one of those four cards remains in play, but it's all very random. It's very nice in chaos decks. Final booster. Memorial to Unity, Spore Crown Thalit, Yargol, the Glutton of Urborg, and the Primeval's Glorious Rebirth. Legendary Sorcery for 7, return all legendary permanent cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. And that is it for this box. Right, looking back at the Mythics, not too bad, uh, we've only hit one pricey card which is the fairy but it's not the most pricey card still it's a uh, well value wise the uh, box isn't really that great but card wise flavor wise oh just look at the set man just two foil rares yeah of which one is pretty good all of those um check lands let me just put them all together Right, Gilded Lotus also. So many of the great, great cards. Yeah. Five of them. Beautiful. Well, thank you all for watching. Um, I will just open up one more thing from Dominaria. That's the uh, fat pack, but yeah, that's not out yet, so I don't know when I will be getting that. Or wait, no, it's called a bundle these days. But I don't know when I will get that, but we'll see that later. Thank you all for watching. See you all later. Bye-bye.